Our immune system has two lines of defense. The quick responders or the innate arm cells and proteins and the trained specialists or the acquired arm cells and proteins. T cells are part of the trained acquired arm. There are two main types, helper T cells and cytotoxic or killer T cells. Helper T cells express CD4 molecule on their surface. So that is why they're called CD4 positive. Cytotoxic T cells have CD8 molecule on their surface. So this little green molecule, CD8. Presence of CD8 molecules on cytotoxic T cells is the reason that these cells are called CD8 positive T cells. Fun fact, cytotoxic T cells are the body's trained assassins. They are the serial killers of our body. They hunt down and destroy cancer cells and virally infected cells. Helper T cells coordinate immune responses by activating other immune cells. Cytotoxic T cells, on the other hand, directly kill virus infected and cancer cells. But there is the risk. If either of these T cells mistakenly recognize our own body, healthy tissue as harmful, they can attack the body and cause autoimmune diseases. To prevent this, T cells undergo strict selection and training process. Today, we are going to explore how the thymus trains these cells to become powerful defenders without becoming dangerous. Our story begins in the bone marrow. Here, the stem cells produce the earlier T cell precursors, young naive precursor T cells. They are not helper or killer T cells yet. They must first travel to the thymus, a training academy where only the qualified will survive. Those that pass will emerge as either CD4 positive helper T cells or CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells. The rest are quietly removed from the system. Now you understand why T cells precursors, these naive little, not naive, these early born T cells are so scared of going to thymus. If they don't pass there, they can die. So let's talk about the T cell precursors. These cells originate in the bone marrow and then migrate towards the thymus to begin their development. T cell precursors migrate from the bone marrow to the thymus at this stage of their life. They do not yet express functional T cell receptor and they also lack any CD4 or CD8 molecules on their surface. They are simply early precursors waiting to enter the thymus where the real training and development will begin. So while circulating in the blood, these T cell precursors arrive at the thymus gland. Here begins their training, a process that will determine their fate. Most of these cells will not survive this journey. Only those that successfully complete the training will emerge as fully developed naive T cells ready to defend the body. So why are they naive? Because they have not encountered any enemy yet. So before that they are naive, after that they are trained. So that, that training is different, the training inside the thymus is different. So let's now explain how T cells are trained within the thymus. So T cells are trained in two major stages inside the thymus. And this view that you're seeing is inside the thymus, if you will. So there is an outer part here that is called the cortex of the thymus. And then there is an, a central or inner part that is called the medulla of the thymus. So T cells are trained in two major stages inside the thymus. The first phase takes place in the outer region called the cortex. The second phase occurs in this inner region called medulla. Now you might wonder, how can these precursor cells even begin training when they arrive with no CD4 on their surface, no CD8 on their surface, no functional T cell receptor on their surface? So once they enter the cortex of the thymus, they are known as thymocyte. So keep in mind, now the term for these precursors is thymocytes. They receive biochemical signals from thymic epithelial cells the cells of the epithelium of the gland here, triggering them to start expressing CD4 positive and CD8 and components of the T cell receptor on their surface. Let's now review the changes that appear on their surface. At this stage, thymocyte expresses both CD4 and CD8 molecules on their surface. And this is why they are called double positive thymocytes. They also express a developing T cell receptor or TCR with CD4, CD8 
and TC are now present, the cell can test whether it recognizes peptides displayed on MIC class 1 or class 2 molecules in the thymus. Additionally, co-stimulatory molecules such as CD28 over here are now expressed as well. Now, I have made CTLA4 over here just for the completion sake. However, CTLA4s do not get expressed inside the thymus. They will be expressed later on in the peripheral tissue. So, now the stage is set for this thymocyte to be tested and either it dies because it is not behaving correctly or it will be successful and get out and start doing its function. So inside the cortex of the thymus, that outer region, thymocytes face their first test. So here is a thymocyte and this is its first test. This is known as positive selection test. Here, the double positive thymocytes attempt to interact with MHC molecules presented by cortical thymic epithelial cells. So, this cell over here is the epithelial cell that is sitting in the cortex of the thymus. This cell and bunch of other cells like this are presenting various antigen, but more importantly, they are offering their hand MHC1 molecule or MHC2 molecule. And the T cell, this thymocyte's duty is to prove that it can bind with the MHC1 or 2 using CD4 or CD8. If its T cell receptor can moderately recognize either MSC class 1 or class 2 with the help of CD8 or CD4 molecules as co-receptors, the thymocyte receives a survival signal. If it fails to recognize MHC at all, meaning it doesn't even handshake, it doesn't even bind, it does not receive the survival signal and it dies by neglect. It's not that some other cell will come and kill it. It would just not receive the nurturing signals and that neglect will kill it. Only the thymocytes that successfully recognize move forward to the next phase of training in the medulla. So the next game has started for their test. So in the medulla of the thymus, thymocytes face the next crucial test, the negative selection test. Here, they are exposed to self-antigens. So if you see here, this is a thymocyte. This is another thymocyte. And these cells, the dendritic and macrophages that are in the medulla of the thymus, they are presenting, they are presenting self-antigen samples to thymocyte to see if the thymocyte react to them. So here they are exposed to self antigens which are small fragments derived from our own proteins. These antigens are presented by dendritic cells and macrophages residing in the thymus. If a thymocyte TCR binds too strongly to these self antigens, it indicates a high risk of attacking the body's own tissue. These cells are therefore eliminated by apoptosis. If you react too much to our own body tissue, you're going to cause diseases. So we're going to let you die. However, if the thymocyte binds only weakly or moderately, it is considered safe and allowed to survive. Those that pass negative selection exit the thymus as mature, naive T cells ready to defend the body without attacking it. So here is the mechanism of death or apoptosis that happens to thymocytes if they strongly bound to self-antigen, if they are reactive to self, if they're going to try to destroy the self, our own tissues. So apoptosis happens. So in this process, when a thymocyte T cell receptor binds too strongly to self-antigen, it sends a strong activation signal in it, in its own self. The T cell receptor of the thymocyte creates a strong activation signal within the thymocyte. This activation signal causes internal pathways that trigger programmed cell death. For example, calcium influx starts. So I made this little crystal-like structure. This is the calcium now rushing into this thymocyte. Now this thymocyte is going to die. So the calcium is rushing in. There is a protein called BIM that is upregulated. Another protein called BCL2 is downregulated. By the way, BCL2 is a survival signal protein. So if you downregulate that, survival signal is not there or, or weaker. On the other hand, BIM would win, which is a apoptotic signal. These changes lead to mitochondrial membrane disruption within this thymocyte, there are mitochondria and their membrane becomes disrupted. Caspases, another set of proteins for apoptosis, they start becoming activated and ultimately apoptosis happens. This process helps eliminate T cells that could cause autoimmune diseases. So we kill those cells that will react negatively to our own body. Now during apoptosis, the cell's internal components are broken down in an orderly fashion. They are kind of torn down as if a building is being dismantled. The 
outer membrane flip signals. So there are signals that start appearing on the outer membrane, such as phosphatidylserine molecule appear on the surface. These are signals to say, all right, clear me out, eat me out. Macrophages in the thymus recognize these signals and gently clear away these dying cells through the a process called aphrocytosis. This cleanup happens without causing inflammation and the materials are recycled by the body. So here is a mature CD positive helper T cell that has successfully completed training in the thymus and has emerged while standing on so many of its colleagues that have died. It now expresses CD4 molecule on its surface and because of that it is called a single positive cell CD4 molecule and a co-stimulatory molecule for example CD28. Once activated in the body by an antigen presenting cell this helper T cell will coordinate other immune cells such as B cells, macrophages, cytotoxic T cells to mount an effective defense. Now this is immature naive cytotoxic T cell. It is CD8 positive so this little green arm here is CD8 and it is also emerging from the thymus. It is also standing on the colleagues' dead bodies, so many other cells that have died here. At this stage, it is a naive, although mature, but naive T cell, cytotoxic T cell. Fully trained, but has not yet encountered its specific antigen or enemy. Once activated by recognizing an infected or cancerous cells, it equips itself with perforins and granzymes. Remember, it is a killer cell. It has the machinery to kill other cells and the important parts are perforins and granzymes. Perforins create pores in the target cell. They create holes in them. While granzymes enter through those pores and trigger apoptosis in the target cell. These are the immune system's trained assassins, the CD4 positive or cytotoxic T cells or effector cells. Powerful, but they act only when they are called upon. Only T cells that recognize our body, but do not attack it, graduate and enter circulation as mature naive T cells. Upon activations, helper T cell orchestrate the defense while cytotoxic T cells carry out the dangerous mission of killing other cells. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you in more lectures. Bye for now.